for this. This is our last mastermind of Q3. I had to think about that for a second. So basically what happens is I always close them out, take a couple weeks break, and then we figure out what we're doing next. Okay. So this is the last one. And I know last time we talked about inviting, um, did that help? Does, do these calls help you? Let me ask those golden questions. Okay. And I just asked that because I want it to be an opportunity for you to collaborate, to get together, to really hear what other coaches are doing out in the field. And it's not just Leslie and Renee doing their thing. And, and I say that because they're sister-in-laws and they are, you know, like that, like it is an opportunity for you to hear what other coaches are doing out in the field. Um, but most importantly, an opportunity for you to show up, to dedicate to your business and to really push towards big goals. So I would love to hear, I mean, we really only have a couple weeks left in September, which is crazy. And then we go into the last quarter of 2018. Um, have any of you started to think about what you're going to do to re reverse, <laughs> reverse engineer, re re well, anyways, reverse engineer, let's say it that way, um, the last 90 days of 2018. Has that even been on your, your horizon? I know, right? Have you guys even thought about that yet? Yeah, Kate, you go, girl. You shook your head. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's more than like a crippling thing. <laughs> that, like, it's, it really, this past couple weeks, it's like hit me. Mm -hmm. And hearing you say the word 90 days associated with it, I was I just like, like three months in my mind is longer when I hear it that way than 90 days. Um, and I know the next step that I have is that Amy and some other leaders are hosting a um, diamond push. So I'm trying to get more girls in there and they just have to be Emerald and hit success club this month. And I just need to hustle and get my booty to back to two star and then focus on then getting Dylan's account to diamond and then just keep going. I mean, elite is still the non-negotiable and it's, scary as I'll get out right now. I have the points on lock, which I do every year, but it, I still have to make it happen. It's still non-negotiable for me. So I'm going to be fighting for it until November. Is it the 17th? No, I have it in my head. The 24th is Thanksgiving day. If that's what you're wondering to go into qualification. But let me make sure it's the 24th. I'm going to look at my planner. I now. actually have it on my phone as a week prior to that. That's smart. <laughs> I normally set it like a week or two in advance. Yep. I give myself. And for the sake of being your mentor and everybody else, we'll say thank you for that. Um, because yes, Thanksgiving Day is actually the 22nd is the last day to lock it and then hold it the, um, the last six weeks. Reminder though, those are hell weeks. You're dealing with everything Christmas. You're dealing with everything holiday, everything, everything. And so I would definitely say before... I would, I mean, even, you know, try, trying with all your might, and I know this kind of might scare you because this is like 40 days, but it's like, how can I sum up a majority of my business by Halloween, October 31st? And I say that because if it's that much closer, you're going to work that much harder towards it. And if all the stars align and you go into it, awesome. And if they don't, you just have a couple things to finalize. Great. Um, but you'll work harder knowing that you're closing it out at the end of a month too. So no, and I like that. And then it does give you the wiggle room just in case anything does happen. And recently I've seen a couple of friends go through it, like, and they just finished the call and they, but it was like every week they were like, I don't know if I'm going to make it happen. I don't know. I don't know. So <laughs> it's a Hail Mary. It's like, let's see if it sticks. And it's like, oh gosh, like, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I would just, I mean, and I would, uh, I would say this to the large group is right now is your opportunity. Obviously it is September 18th. Okay. So I would really start to think, okay, what am I going to accomplish by October 31st? That's a big day, big holiday. And obviously, um, you know, maybe you'll break your program and eat naughty for that day. I mean, I do on Halloween candy is like a non-negotiable, right? But I would really just say like, what are you going to work towards right now? That's going to give your business the momentum that it deserves. And I think it's a friendly reminder 
reminder of how you show up in October, November, December dictates your business in January, February, March. And I don't want you to go, I'm saying a lot of big naughty words. Sorry. I don't want you to go balls to the wall. I'm going to say it and do everything. It's so tired and then quit in our busiest season, January, February, March. So I would say, what can you do right now to really close in on those goals to, you know, set yourself up for 2019, but it is the, 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 Builders that you recruit now that make up for January, February, March, it is the challengers and getting them results and excitement now that's going to allow them to eventually maybe go over to the coaching side. So everything, you know, and I have so many coaches that say, yeah, this is one of my harder seasons, but the large majority of my top leaders always say, this is my favorite season because of what it entails moving forward. Does that make sense? This is always my favorite time of year. I mean, it's it's like, because so many people I feel like do say it's hard and so they let up the gas. And so I normally have higher success club point numbers, Mm -hmm. higher recruiting numbers, even though I'm like already replacing fourth quarter quitters right now. I was talking about that with leaders on my team yesterday, but I like this time of year because so many people do let back that Mm -hmm. there's that many more people to help. But now I'm extra stressed with the whole elite thing, but it is, it's different this year, but it's still going to happen. For sure. And I would just remind you in these, you'll watch this in Julie's um, recording that I'm going to put up. It, like I said, it's still uploading, but um, I asked her, what are the five things that you would say help you to get to superstar diamond? And I feel like it goes for anything within this. I'm just going to name these off because I think they're so, um, so incredible. So first and foremost, number one, patient for patience for long-term goals. So urgently patient, obviously getting it done, but being patient. And I think it's a reminder too, you know, it took her seven years to become a superstar diamond, but she's only dropped it, I think one or two times in those the last three years, which to me, I'm like, oh, like normally when somebody gets to superstar diamond, they get there and then it falls immediately. She has been solid except for two times out of those three years. So it's really, really incredible. Number two, be coachable. Um, Never feel like you have it figured out. And she bluntly said, if you feel like you have it figured out, it's your time to quit. And then it'd be giggled. I'm like, it's so true. This is always changing. Right now we're dealing with Instagram, right? We're all learning it. Um, Number three, your tribe is everything. Be intentional on who you let into your inner circle. Um, But most importantly, your most important tribe is your family. And communicating with your family, Nikki's like, I agree. It really is. Um, Your family needs to know your goals, what you're working towards, why, and really needs to support those goals. You know, if if you do not have a supportive spouse, it typically is because they don't see the income tied to this. You know, men specifically want to see the money rolling in before they'll understand what this is. So I would just challenge you, okay, start working on these goals, getting their involvement, and also their blessing on when you're going to work. You know, if you're obviously always in the corner on your computer and not involved with your family, any person has a reason to not be um, supportive of that. Okay. But I love that she said, you know, your family is your most important tribe. Um, Number four, nothing is random or by chance. Um, She says everything is meant to happen. So for example, if you wear your swag and somebody brings it up, that's not a random act. It's an opportunity for you to then go do that next step of, hey, oh my goodness, have you ever tried it? Like what, you know, you, you obviously know what it is. How do you know it? Have you done the program? Like start asking the questions, peel back the layers and, and start just conversing with people when you see them. And um, number five, do the stuff that is inconvenient and embrace the season. Hustle hard during hustle season. So Kate, I would say now's your time to hustle, right? And she did a lot of comparisons of, you know, back when she was a brand new mom. And I would even say when you have a brand new puppy, right? The first couple of weeks suck. You're not going to sleep. And then that's my relation. That's the Kate's relation. You know, I like, just told Leslie that we might be getting a puppy tomorrow. Okay. Well, let me tell you right now, you're not going to sleep, right? There's going to be a lot of whining from the kennel, but it too She's going to be outdoor. Okay. It too <laughs> shall pass though, right? <laughs> And that's what it says. It's like, you know, you have to hustle hard or embrace that season when you're upon it, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be like that forever. And, um, don't, okay. We, you don't want to settle for average or ordinary. And right now you are also dealing with all of our attention spans being 15 seconds. Thanks to Instagram. 
we're paying attention for 15 seconds. So what she's saying is commit for longer than 15 seconds with your business. You know, when you realize that this is a life business, when you, and she said my favorite quote, I'm sure many of you have heard this, but don't give up what you want most for what you want now. And it's just that constant reminder of, you know what, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do the hard things. I'm a lifer in this business and I'm not going to take no for an answer. Um, but her overlying message, and I know you're all going to go back and watch this call because it's so freaking good is have fun while you're doing it. Yes. There's seasons of hustle. There's seasons of, Oh my gosh, I'm going to pull out my hair. But if you're not having fun along the way of it, you're missing the meaning of what this business is. And she went as bold as if you are not passionate about your, about your business or what you have going on within your business, then you're not passionate about life. And you need to go figure out what brings you passion in life outside of Beachbody. Okay. When you get passion and bring that passion back. And even my leaders were kind of conversing after the call and, and they were saying, you know, when my leaders are like, Oh, I'm so just burned out. And what they'll say is go take two days off and go do what you want to do. Unplug. And that's one thing, including myself, that we rarely do, but it's the most vital key to you, your business, your sanity in your life. Okay. So that's just kind of opening it. Um, if you, all of you start talking about the last 90 days of 2000, it's like 94 days till Christmas. That's really weird. Um, I saw 95 yesterday. I was like, ah! like oh my gosh, well, what am I going to get for Christmas presents? It's like, oh my gosh, it's just crazy. But if you start bringing that up in your messaging, of, hey, I don't know what the goals were that you set at the beginning of 2018. Have you accomplished them? Are you still wanting to lose five to 10 pounds? Are you still wanting to pay off credit card debt? Are you still wanting to, I mean, start to realize that you are a one-stop shop, obviously, right? And you can start talking about these things and because a large majority have not done anything with their goals and they, la they wait the last probably 60 days, November, December to really make it happen. And yet those are the busiest seasons of our life typically, right? So if you start having this in your messaging of like, I'm here to help you reach, you know, achieve a X, Y, Z and get ready for 2019. That's right around the corner. You'll start to see that people want to be part of a community and you just committed that you're going to show up every single day too. Okay. So now talking about it a little bit more, what does that entail? Does that kind of strike some interest in what you're have on the docket what you're going to work towards the end of 2018. No, this is all new. I guess we don't have really technically have 90 days left. We have more than that right now, but just trying to prepare the conversation. I'll give you the heebie jeebies. Like, crap. Christina's giggling. I think it gives me, it gives me the heebie jeebies. I'm like, oh my gosh right? I'll, I'll say what's on my mind. So yeah. I'm new to this group. Um, I just had my third baby in April. So like I'm on the sleepless nights going on 22 weeks of sleepless nights, which is like torture. <laughs> but um, like I am, I've, I'm long-term beach body. I've been a coach since 2012 and like hit diamond my first couple of months and went two star the year after. And then had a second baby and just lost my lost myself within motherhood so here I am baby number three just like trying to gain my momentum back and I spent the first couple of months postpartum just really focusing on me and like my transformation again and just getting that mindset right and like so now I'm here ready to like build my momentum because I know setting up a year for elite starts now Mm -hmm. you know, for next year. So that's, that's why I'm here. And that's why that's my goal. My vision for the fourth quarter is to like build this momentum up so I can come in for 2019, like super strong and get my two star back by, by December 31st and open up that second CBC. Cause that's like one of the things that I didn't do when I hit two star the first time. You can still do it now. Really? Yeah. I thought you had to be two no. star. No, and I had another coach that I actually had to walk through this, and they were like, are you freaking kidding me? And I'm like, oh, my God. I've been, well, I've been two-star lifetime since, like, 2013. Yeah, no, you got it, girl. <laughs> I know. It's lifetime status. Um, the thing is, though, is that 
will help you working towards that goal and also increase your income. So yeah. do me a favor after the call, just message me and I'll give you the details on what you need to do. But yeah, okay. you're already lifetime. So you just do it. It does take three to five business days. You have to go the old school route with filling out the application and where you're placing it, blah, blah, blah. And I'll just give you a little insight on kind of what to do next. So just message me. Okay. But I'll do I, that. I love that you brought that up and I, I hope that it helps you then be like, Oh, crap, I got these goals in the bag. <laughs> like, cause I know like business stuff. Like I have that business mindset. I know numbers. I know how to make volume work for my benefit. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just doing the work now. <laughs> for sure. So now, and it's heightened awareness because you're just about to double your income if you place it strategically and, you know, focus on obviously the recruiting, so on and so forth. So yeah, big things will happen with that second CBC, but get her done for sure. Okay. I will. But I got to go pick up my son, so I'm going to yeah. go. Yeah, you're good. Thank you, hon. And I think that's a friendly reminder. I have so many coaches that actually have run into that and think that they do have to be a lifetime, or excuse me, a paid rank of diamond or two-star diamond to open up their second. They don't. Um, you know, it's okay if they fall, but obviously opening up that second CBC is very important. So do walk them through that. Um, but, I mean, we have – I mean, this call will be kind of short because I do want you to listen to – the call that I just had with Julie, because I feel like it just hit its home so well. And obviously she's in the trenches just like you. Yeah. She's been a coach for 10 years, but she shows up. And I think it's also a reminder, you know, she falls into this business when life gets hard. She doesn't fall away from this business. And there's this constant repeat of strong leaders who have been with our business for a very long time. And that's what they do is they fall into it when you know, and, and she actually said this on the, what it takes. If you guys didn't see it, I know Shannon said that she saw it. The recording's horrible, but she said it so eloquently. She said, why would I ever remove myself from Beachbody when it can solve all the problems that I'm experiencing? And I was like, hallelujah. Like, she's just amazing. So what else do you ladies want to talk about? We have 14 minutes. This is our last call of Q3. What do you want to talk about? golden question huh do you feel like you have the tools the mindset set up to really go into the next launches I mean obviously um let's just say pumpkin spice was a little bit of a hit so <laughs> that one been there done that moved on right it's like whoop, whoop. officially sell out Ooh. I was checking last night and I didn't see anything sold out yeah it was like 15 hours or and I think it was faster than that but yeah Go on. Three boxes. So, <laughs> so. Do you good. Yeah. So that one's gone. But what are you all doing for proving grounds? What are you doing to set your teams up, your team up for success with that one? So I'll share because actually this was something that I was talking to Amy and a couple other leaders about recently. Because while I love Chef Shop, the first time I went through it, I wanted to set like Amy's at into really big launches and so we kind of decided and not fully as a team because there are other leaders doing it um that sometimes like it's because especially this year i feel like there's launch after launch after launch after launch which i love but there's nothing i always get behind every program launch i've done country heat even though i'm not a country music fan i've done size even though i have literally no dance moves i like trip over myself and punch myself in the face but like i get behind all the launches but i think for this one i just started doing insane max 30 again to hype up the new year for Sean. And that was like a hard decision and I felt bad about it, but then like talking to other people and it was deciding like long-term and I still love shift shop and I'm sure I will do proving grounds. Um, but this is just what w made sense for me in my business. And then, so that's what I wanted to share. I love your honesty. And I feel like majority of coaches are saying exactly that. Um, I was just, I'm just going to say thank you so much for saying that because I just was telling my team that yesterday that there's so many great things to be excited about. Um, but I feel like that's also counterproductive at times mm -hmm. because I, you know, I will talk about pumpkin spice for a couple days and then I'll talk about my new launch lift four group coming. And then also like, I really want to do the ultimate reset in October. So I need to be talking about that. And so I feel like it is so vital that we have these launches to to build like our team volume, you know, for, for the rest of our team. But like, it's almost like personally, we have to decide like what, 
kind of goes with where we're at in our own journey. But um, so I guess any kind of tips or maybe just some confirmation from other people that that's the best thing to do, because I do kind of feel like I don't want to miss out on this, but this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. Anybody no, know? it's a great question. I would love to hear from you ladies. What are your thoughts? I feel like this is a Kate, Nikki, and I conversation. Really, ladies? I'm unmuting you. I just sound, <laughs> I just sound terrible because I have a cold and I'm super nasally and congested. <laughs> but I think it just varies, like, per person because, like, I know that there's times when um, a program will come out and, like, I'm maybe in the middle of a different program and I haven't necessarily always stopped the program I'm doing to do that, but I still – afterwards we'll go back to it if that makes sense so like right now <clears throat> a lot of the girls on my team are doing 21 day fix extreme mm -hmm. and then we are either going to do another round of that or we're thinking about doing a few weeks of a little more obsessed when that launches and then we have a group of us doing ultimate reset next month too so um right after super sunday we're starting it that week so we'll finish up like a week and a half before thanksgiving and we're going to be advertising for that to see if, you know, we have potential customers that want to do it with us. For so, sure. um, and then of course, Shanti and we have two, you know, of our coaches on our team who are in the test group, which is like so awesome and exciting and I'm not jealous at all and <laughs> super um, excited to be able to like share that we have teammates in that test group, like, and to get, you know, excitement for that program starting in January for 20 minute workouts. Mm -hmm. And Shanti no. is like my, day, so. your spirit animal. I feel like, I think the best thing to do, Nikki, is take out a calendar and lay it all out. What, because if, if this is the thing, if you put everything on it, you're going to be doing nothing. It's kind of like you talk to everybody, you're talking to nobody. I would lay out October, November, December, and I would just start writing in key dates. And what does that mean? Julie said it beautifully in the last video. She said, I like to get my coaches small wins. So, you know, if I'm going to Sean week and then a little more obsessed and then, you know, those little things building up to it, I feel like you too, as a as a coach, you know, eventually you need to go through and do every single program, even if it isn't your program. So you can speak to it. Now is right now the time that is up to you. Okay. I mean, there's plenty of programs that I've done and I'm like, Nope, never doing that one again, but I understand it. I know how to talk about it. Do I recommend it? Sure. Not for me though. Like, you know what I mean? There's certain things I'm like, Oh, hell no. But I had fun doing it when I did it. It just didn't speak to my body. Um, so she's in, okay. So Shannon, to answer your question, so the program is the beginning of the year, but all of the challenge packs go on sale in December. But just think of eighty day obsession. Was that eighty day obsession last year? Was it feel like it was that long ago? Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's similar to that. Um, yeah. So what I would say, take out a calendar, and every single one of yours is going to be very, very different. Okay. But you have to line it and your people will, will, if you line it out for where they need to go next, especially during the holidays and you make it so turnkey, they're gonna be like, okay, cool. Now I know what to, I need to do. Okay. I got to win there. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to this. Like they show up and they want to be told what to do. You are the expert, right? You don't have to be, they don't have to be the expert. And that's why they really rely on you. So Nikki, I would suggest that Shannon, I would suggest that, um, and just have a game plan and stick to it. And what I would say, if it's some shiny object, say Carl comes out with a million dollar promotion and you're like, Nope, doesn't work into my ultimate goal. Like I had a coach specifically that is the same thing and biggest Shanti fan, but her number one goal was to get to five star diamonds. She could get to leadership and that reigned more important than the transfer 20 test group. So she put that on the horizon and went after that because it made more sense to her individual goal. So the beautiful thing, it's not a one-stop shop or a one answer, but I would do that and see what your leaders say, you know, how does this feel? Does this feel good? Is there anything else we need to add in there? You know, get them. They don't want to, this is the thing. Your team doesn't always want to hear from you. They want to hear from other leaders on the team other people that are also doing things within the business. Oh, yes. Live for my soulmate. I mean, I still do live for. It's still my favorite. It, 
it's my body. Um, you know, Shannon and I, I know we can attest to it. We love lifting weights. That is me. I don't like a peer cardio program um, at all. Even the little hit stuff that he does, I'm like, really? Really? But I know I need it. Um, but yeah, I think especially four days a week. I mean, holidays, hustle bustle, that is a definitely, you know, so if that's all that you can put on your plate, lift four it is. Like, make it simple. Cut out all the other BS. Yeah, yeah. get it, girl. I did shoulders too, did I? Um, beautiful. Okay. What else? Anything else that you would like to share? Like any big wins within your team with you the last couple weeks? Yes. I just got a business coach finally <laughs> again because my team really fizzled. And I told you guys about that new info group that I just implemented. And um, I don't know if you saw me post not too long ago. I was running for Miss Health and Fitness uh, through HERS Muscle and Fitness Magazine. And I uh, connected with tons of the other competitors, like in my group. As I progressed and they did not, I reached out and started connecting with them and said, you gave me a run for my money. Great job, you know, and uh, started building relationships. And as soon as I opened this info group, I went to my chicken list and started, you know, and I had started conversations about whether they were doing health and fitness for a living. And a lot of times they're, they're wanting to, or maybe they're already a personal trainer. But anyway, one of those gals came on and she's super smart. Uh, she's this Italian gal and she's, she really has a business mind. She's a mortgage broker. Um, and she's already jumping in because she came through the info group on my first day and she said she loved it. I asked her about user experience and she loved it. She's analytical. It was perfectly organized. She said she had been hit up by beach body coaches several times, but she always found herself trying to Google information and she just loved it. So anyway, she's already added three people to the group. I talked to her about signing her husband and becoming Emerald this week. And I talked to her about going diamond with me um, by the end of October because I just signed up um, my daughter. And so uh, I want to get my daughter to diamond and uh, her to diamond at the same, or with the goal of by the end of summer. And that will help me finally make progress towards get one, get back to two star, but also make progress towards five star finally. That's awesome. I'm very excited. Yes. Well, and the fact that you said you just signed your daughter. Okay. You, uh, you have a daughter old enough to sign, be signed. Like, ah! um, but that's I have so an 18 year old and a 20 year old. You stop that. Okay. <laughs> but I love that. I love that you worked on your chicken list. And it, I think it's just a friendly reminder. You are in the networking business, meaning talking. Me not salesy, meaning talking conversations. And I love that. I, it sounds like that's going to go really, really well. And I love that she's analytical. Tell her just to get her butt started. Because if it's like my fiance, who's super analytical, it's like, I have to know 12 steps ahead before I and, go. And I warned her about that. I said, I know that you like details. I said, please don't try to know everything. Just do these basics. And I really have her started uh, on that. So yeah. Yeah. That's really good. So cool. <laughs> Okay. I love it. Congrats, Shannon. What else? What are some other wins that we've had in the last couple weeks? So I have yeah. <clears throat> one of my diamonds went one star a couple weeks ago. And then um, I have my other diamond that has a coach that's working to diamond. So she's working toward, she's working toward two star. She wants to get her husband to diamond too. But I feel like I do pretty well with um, having a lot of coaches who are sharing and like getting on the board, it's just getting them to like hit success club that I struggle with. So do you guys have any tips for that or like how you encourage or like pump up your team to do that? Because I, in looking at my downline, like not just my PS, but like my downline, there's like two, 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 four, like <laughs> there's points on the board, but they're just not, quite hitting it. So one thing that I realized was I had this talk with my star diamond on my team too and her diamond and we were talking about how they're just not talking to enough people and like they get that win and they get excited and they're like oh that was easy. Yeah, that was I talked to three people and I got one or you know like they get in that mindset. So on our like 
earlier this month on our team call, we just got really real about how many people we were talking to or like t starting those new conversations every day and not getting held up on like the three people every month. Um, and then also we were talking about that and like drawing that back into this week's national wake up call because so many people think they're in it when they're not. So I think it's just getting that conversation going um, and referencing this week's national wake up call and getting real about whether you're in this business or you're not. And then changing your mindset about how many people you're talking to and actually inviting because I think that's that's where it is like that's my honest belief is like they they see that win and they think it's easy or they see that win and they get freaked out it's like one or the other and they're just not talking to enough people because if they got it once they can they're just not doing the work to do it <laughs> I so agree what were you gonna say Renee oh, I was just saying thank you I <clears throat> like I said I just feel like sometimes they say they want it and they just, their actions aren't. And remind yourself, you work that. with the working, you don't work with the willing. And I think it's a friendly reminder of, okay, you help too. What this means is this, you say you're a business builder. What that entails is that you are always helping three every single month, if not more. And once you hit three, you're not stopping. I would just remind them, you know, the whole goal here is that you're consistently helping five. All I know is within this business, when I, this business moves forward and I have success now and in the future when I help five every single month. So I think it gives that constant reminder, but if you're beating a dead horse, stop beating the dead horse. You know, you can only push one uphill, but you can run with a hundred. So I would just remind yourself like, okay, like I would, I would remind it, set the precedence of it. I would also make sure that you're asking the question at the beginning of the month, also doing power hours, you know, closer to the end of the month so that they're showing you're, you're showing that you're still working and showing up. And then at the end of the day, if that's all that they do, they're satisfied with that. But if they said that they want this, they want X, Y, Z, hold them accountable. That's probably the most number one thing is hold them accountable and call them out on their bull crap. And that's hard because you don't want to feel like you have children, but how is, often yeah. would you say you guys, besides like your, your team page or your PS page, do you check in personally with your coaches? Great question. The majority of my leaders are communicating with them daily through via a message thread. Um, you know, and typically when you put your leaders in a message thread, you say one of two things and then it just blows up, right? Like, cause they're constantly motivating and inspiring each other. Um, but if you're working with leaders and you have leaders on your team, I would suggest that there's some form of communication daily because if you think about it, they have big goals. You want to help them with those goals or maybe it's every other day, but I wouldn't go weeks on end without talking to them for sure. One thing that's helped me with that too is because I was getting held up in like micromanaging when I was checking in with people every day is like, I love those message pods and just having different message pods for different groups of people where they're at in their business, whether they are hitting success club, whether they're like new, like just 2018 coaches and they, you just want to help them help that first two people or whatever it is to get that elite coin or whatever, like for where they're at or your emeralds that really helps me because then it's less. I don't want to say it's less draining, but it is less draining. And one thing that I really took away from Summit and the leadership training was like, we need to stop trying to be people's therapists. And I was like, letting myself take on that role too often where like, I think it's important to vent and I, I think that's totally okay, but I think getting past that. So I really like those message threads for that because it keeps that open line of communication and they always know they can come to me too. And I do check in with them on a personal level as well. Um, but this is just like a daily check-in thing. For sure. Good answer. Okay. I'm going to call out Leslie because she did a post. She did a stink of post. How did it feel? Do you feel better? <clears throat> yeah, I, um, honestly was really nauseous about it like before yeah. um just uh the idea of talking about me being successful and like me not being a victim anymore like that whole idea like that's just not how my posts usually go and but then after i posted it it didn't feel nauseating at all like it felt really good so um and like the response was good and I felt like, like confident, you know, and I've been reading, um, or listening to she owns the place, which is about confidence. What is uh, that? Huh? Is it really good? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's by the girl who wrote Girl Code. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's really really good. So I've been listening to that, and then and I actually listened to it all the way down to Portland this weekend because I went and got fitness photos done. And so I literally just told the photographer, I was like, all right, this is the vibe I'm going for. Like, I want to attract confident, successful women. And she was like, all right, let's do it. So, and I had a blast. So it was really fun. Okay. So I would just remind you, stay consistent with it. Don't feel like it's the one thing that you do. And then it's like, and I did it. No, yeah. stay, stay consistent with it. And I love that it was nauseating and painful, but you know what? You still lived. And I think it's just a reminder. It's like, you know what? People it's like, it makes me think of Mary and Keyshawn in our office here. Mary was going back and forth like, oh, do I train for this? Do I do my Ironman, blah, blah, blah. And Keyshawn point blank said to her, and we all work really close. So it was kind of funny. She's like, somebody that has more on their plate is, gonna, is doing it. It was like, boom, like drop the mic. You just got called out. And she's like, all right, doing it. You know, so it's just like, just consistently do it. People that are more scared than you are doing it. Just keep doing it. Yeah, proud. I love that quote that says, like, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. <laughs> like, because that is, like, so true. Like, it's the busy people who get shit done. <laughs> like, it's mm -hmm. the procrastinators and the people who are scared that don't. And Yeah. For sure. Oh, I yeah. love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Or thank you for letting me call you out. <laughs> you didn't share. Um, all right, Kate, I'm going to throw it to you. What is something that's great that's been happening within your business? Um, well, just a little win the other day was I signed up a new coach who I've literally been talking to about coaching since for months on end. And it was just a reminder. It's like when one of those things happens, when you talk to somebody for like six months and they, she's been ghosting me for the past four, <laughs> like I'm annoying. And then she posted a transformation the other day and so many people were interacting and she has an amazing transformation. And, um, I was just like, girl, I know I'm probably driving you crazy, but when are you just going to join me? And she was like, honestly, I'm just afraid of failure and, but I'm ready to do it. Like, thank you for con like, I'm sorry for ghosting you. Um, and then I was like, do you, and she, the funny thing is, and this is, it just reminded me how funny people are when they get in their head with fear. And like, it wasn't even fear of disappointing herself. She didn't want to disappoint me. Um, because even she signed up for a challenge pack under a random coach. Like she just bought one off Beachbody because we had talked about it without me because she didn't want to disappoint me and she didn't become a coach. And it was just like a reality check and like a reminder that sometimes we have to break things down. And I think I need to be... I like, I think I say it enough. Like if you're not ready to become a coach, let's get you in my challenge group. But I also obviously need to say it more because sometimes apparently people, <laughs> people forget that or people think it's all or nothing. Um, so there was that. And then, um, I think it's just a win for me is like changing my mindset because I was, so I, <laughs> I feel like I went through the five stages of denial or something with the last four quarters, you know, when you, you get like, you, you get upset, you freak out, you go, <laughs> it was like the five stages of denial going on mm -hmm. my head the other day or in the past couple weeks. And then the past few days I've finally come to, <laughs> not like come to terms, but I've like decided to, you know, change my mindset around it and feel reinvigorated instead of stressed out or like freaked out that because it's happened to me in the past few years where I get like, I get really hungry and then I let go and I'm like, Oh, well now this can't happen. And so I'm just like, it's not going to happen. Um, I think anybody who's been in this business and been saying they were pushing for elite for multiple years can like attest to that. That was me. And I just decided I'm not going to let myself pull that on myself. And like the only and I, I like looked at all the other leaders. I looked at all these people going to elite and I'm like, if they can do it, I can too. I just need to step into that role and keep reminding myself of that. And like looking at my confidence in myself and reiterating that. So that good. Was. No, it's amazing. I think it's just a, a reminder too, is you don't take no for an answer. You consistently ask regardless, you know, because people go through different phases. Like everybody that you asked, I think this is a reminder. Everybody that you asked 90 days ago, now may be their time. Okay. So this is your opportunity. And I had a coach say, and I loved this. I don't remember what this was on. Oh, this is in one of my masterminds, but she says, I go back to all my old groups and I reinvite my people that already said yes to me in the past. 
and maybe never bought a challenge pack or maybe never went to the next stage. And I go back and I ask them, and it's like, that's still a warm list. Like I would remind yourself like who has said no and it maybe wasn't the right time or season, but you can check in with and you can be their friend, right? Who is that person? Um, and I love Kate, what you were saying, like the, all the levels of, I mean, yes, you're going to go through the bat, like the crying, the angry, like all of those things. But I feel like this is the thing is that's why it's even more special that you work towards it and make it happen to prove yourself that you are worthy of that goal, that accomplishment. Right. Um, but that's good. I like this little feel good talk. Thank you, ladies. Um, Christina, I feel like your win is your second CBC. Is there anything else you want to sum up besides that? I think just from this call, I got like a whole bunch of ideas on like where to go from here. And like just when, what you said to check in with in your old groups, like I have tons of old groups, like I'm going to go through that list and just start messaging people, building the relationships again yeah, and seeing where it can go. I'm like, hello, light bulb moment. <laughs> Right? And I have like old email lists too when I had like people do my Google Docs from back in the day. Yeah. And yeah. Good. It was a light bulb for me too. I'm like, why wouldn't we ever think that? Like it was Lauren Fitzgerald. That's who it is. And she's I mean super bold, super strong in her messaging. And she's like, Yeah, I go back to my groups all the time. I just keep on going through them, pulling out who I think still would be on my list of who needs to be a coach on my team, who needs to be a challenger, so on and so forth. So good. Christina, take all those notes and put them into action, girl. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Well, let's close out this call. I will obviously post this recording. I will post the other recording that I would told you about that I just got off with. And obviously time now to decide what we're going to do next quarter, Q4. So obviously the details of this won't come until probably mid October because there's leadership and there's everything else at the beginning. And that's why I typically take our break because I need a break. You need a break. You need a time to focus on your goals and make them happen. And I would just remind yourself that you set a bar right now within your business, that you do your hairy, scary list first, that you do your, you eat your frog first. You, you know, all of these things, you do your power hour before you do ever, anything else. You press play, you drink your Shakeology, you read personal development, like make you a priority because when you are focusing and becoming the best version of yourself, that's when you're going to attract that next person that's going to be on your team and in your challenge group. Okay. So you are the most important. Um, yes, Shannon. Yep. So it's the last call, the last mastermind of Q3. Q4 will happen next month, but I don't know. I have to get re-energized, re-excited. And um, so details will come in the future. I need to read that book. What, what book? What did I miss? Oh, <laughs> yep. Eat that. <laughs> Read that book. Eat that frog. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. And any other book suggestions, send them over. I love, I'm going to look into that. She owns this, the place because I love to grow code so much. So that's really cool. Hey, ladies, I appreciate you. Have an amazing day, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Bye.